Elon Musk came in and we got all these press articles right. and then things went to a whole nother level of, right. of awareness of the company uh, and it's just been a wild ride for sure. Yeah, so he did uh, buy a, a Boxable Casita. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually one of the first three prototypes that, mm -hmm. that we built uh, and he's got it in his backyard at SpaceX in Boca Chica, Texas. Mm -hmm. So what happened was he saw uh, a post mm -hmm. with the video of the house unfolding mm -hmm. uh, and he liked the post and then the next day his assistant called me and was like hey can we buy one of these actually they wanted to buy more than one and I was like well I only have three and I need to keep at least two I'll sell you one Welcome to the Digital Social Hour. I'm your host, Sean Kelly. I'm here with my co-host, Wayne Lewis. What up, what up? And our guest today, Galliano Tiramani. Hey guys, thanks for having yeah, me. No, Absolutely, Boxable appreciate it. Himself. Yeah, we got Boxable here in Las Vegas, actually. Mm -hmm. We got a big factory and we are building houses every day. Nice. How many houses a day are you building? Right now, we're just doing uh, about two houses per day. Mm -hmm. And then later this year, we're installing a whole bunch of automated manufacturing equipment and we're gonna be ramping up big time, hopefully, get about uh, 10 houses per day out of our current mm -hmm. uh, factory space. Wow, and you had 10,000 uh, pre-orders, right? Yeah, wow. we got a big list is, of is names. It, it, well, no, it's 170,000. Yeah. Oh, 170. 170,000 people on your waiting list. Yeah, it's amazing. So we went viral on social media many times. A lot so of you guys are like out. the Michael Jordan of like the Jordan shoe of houses. Mm. Yes. <laughs> of modular yes. homes. Yeah, of modular homes. Yeah, we got 170,000 names on the wait list for the Boxable Casita. That's unheard and of. And that was too. zero paid? 10,000 of those people have about 10,000. Well, imagine if you just charge everybody like $100, like what Elon Musk did with that Cybertruck just to be on a waiting list. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we charged 200. <laughs> oh, oh shit. so all those people pay $200. So about uh, 10,000 people have paid a uh, $200 deposit okay. uh, and some other tiers of deposit in there as well. Okay. Um, so and really, we just did that to kind of prove interest, prove demand mm -hmm. in, in the product. So I could go out to investors and say, hey, if you give me the money to build this factory and mm -hmm. build these houses, right. we're going to sell them. We got people lined up to build right. them, to buy them. Because it's easier to raise money when you have some revenue, right? right. Yeah, we got to prove a whole bunch of things to, to mm -hmm. raise the money and, and demand is definitely one of them. So in, in five years, you guys have a $3 billion evaluation. Not too shabby. <laughs> that ain't bad. That's crazy. And he raised 140 million. Yeah. 140 million, 170. What, 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 what's the actual number? So we decided to do crowdfunding mm -hmm. uh, to raise money for the company and leverage social media and ended Whoa, up so raising leverage social media. Yeah, ended up raising wow. over $140 million to mm -hmm. fund the Boxable Vision and got started roughly around early 2018 um, just with the idea. And now we just actually signed our third factory building last week. Wow. How big are they? Pretty good. Factories. So factory one, uh, which has been in operation about 18 months now, mm -hmm. is 170,000 foot warehouse building. Mm -hmm. um, building two, which we got uh, signed in, in January, around January, is about 130,000 feet. Mm -hmm. And then the new building is 100,000 feet. And we managed to get all those three buildings just right next to each other. And we just keep ramping up and you know dialing in the technology and, and getting better at uh, wow. producing housing faster and, and lower cost. This is a big problem you're solving because a lot of people can't afford a house. Yeah. So I feel like you're helping out. Yeah, I, I like to think that this is the biggest problem that I, I could be solving. And if you look around at different you know market industries, uh, building construction is massive. This is, I think, trillions of dollars uh, worldwide. And it's really the last big kind of old school product that hasn't moved into the factory. So mm. like everything you see is built in, in a factory on an assembly line. Mm -hmm. This microphone, my sneakers, my iPhone, right. but houses are not. Houses are still built literally guys with hand tools one at a time with like a hammer and nail mm -hmm. standing on a ladder and it's slow and, and inefficient. So there's a huge opportunity there to make it work in the factory. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do is solve all the problems that stopped building construction from working in the factory so that we can just turn up volume like crazy on the production speed, mm -hmm. uh, lower the cost, and hopefully dramatically reduce housing costs for the whole world. So you're basically, this is kind of a proof of concept. So it's possible that 
you may be able to build parts of a home that are manufactured to where it's kind of like plug and play in a sense like even with 5,000 square foot homes walls stairs oh, yeah. everything just mm. oh yeah just kind of putting it together like a Legos right. yeah right. yeah way, right? so, so the first product we have is called the boxable casita mm-hmm. it's basically a 360 square foot uh, room kind of the size of this room it's got uh, bathroom kitchen mm. uh, bed and couch mm. and that arrives on site just finished ready to go mm. uh, sets up in, in a few hours and you have a little house but mm. that's just the beginning the full vision is a building system where we would mass produce different room modules in different sizes that can stack and connect to build everything whether it's um, a single family or a big thousand unit apartment building we want to build like most all buildings on the planet using our system and in order to do that we have to go like really big like Above ridiculously and beyond. that's big. a lot yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you live in a box bowl yourself? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> you know, I have uh, a wife and, and four kids, uh, but if it was just me, I, w- I definitely wouldn't mind living in one. So how many square feet is the Casita model? So it's roughly, it's like 19 feet by 19 feet. Mm-hmm. So three, about 360 square feet, uh, uh-huh. nine and a half foot high ceilings. Mm-hmm. Uh, really feels very nice, upscale, great for one person or a couple. Okay. And the idea to start with that product was to focus on backyard accessory dwelling units. So in California and other places, they're changing the laws to allow you to put a little house in the backyard of your main house mm. as a way to increase housing affordability. Mm. So we thought so great place to start. Be a great market then. Oh yeah, huge wow. amount of interest coming from over there. Did you see they just uh, did some weird law with house insurance in California? Yeah, they removed house insurance out there. State Farm is is pulling out of that market because of all the crime. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's I, not good. I kind of feel like <laughs> some some massive is going to happen. Yeah. Either some kind of earthquake or something. They don't want to be responsible for it. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's what you think, an earthquake? I think, I mean, think about it. Why would an insurance company pull out of the whole state? Yeah, it's never happened before. I mean, you got Oklahoma, you got Texas, they got hur- hurricanes, tornadoes, mm. all that you can think of. But California, they're like pulling completely out. They want nothing to do with the market. I thought it was the crime, but yeah. Something catastrophic about is about to happen. There's wow. no way an insurance company just totally pulls out of the market and wants no interest. Mm. They don't even care about the the uh, you know the monthly payments or anything like that they don't right. even care about the reserve it's just like no we don't want no part so is that related to like the government doing um, stuff no or? i think it's just the they them you know they know something that we don't some details that they're not giving because the insurance companies usually don't pull out of a market california is one of the richest markets you guys the most cars the most expensive cars most expensive homes most people who live there have a lot of money yeah so why not but they're like, no. It is interesting because insurance companies make a lot of money. So yeah, for them to have done that, that means they something. Make bad, money right? off of, of what if. Speaking of insurance, can these houses be insured? And do they have warranties attached to them? And what's what what do you guys protect or replace? And what are some of the problems that you've seen these houses may have in the future? Yeah, definitely have the warranty. And mm. as far as like insurance financing, mm. pretty much all the same stuff that yeah. applies to a traditional house is going to mm. apply to our house, uh, except that. Uh, the way we are engineering building the house is we've selected different building materials, different manufacturing methods that we think resulted in a a better house. So Mm -hmm. for example, all our houses have hurricane uh, speed wind ratings on the walls. They all Mm -hmm. have amazing energy efficiency, fire resistance. Mm -hmm. So we've actually not only figured out how to mass produce the houses on an assembly line, but we're building a better house. And I think they're way more durable than the house that me and live in and house that you live in. Exactly. And I think eventually that will translate into lower insurance costs once we're out there in the market mm-hmm. for a while and the insurance companies can establish like oh you know these houses are less likely to be damaged by the environment or, or something else so you can make them bulletproof less. too well it's funny actually <laughs> I, 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 I think I, about I, it <laughs> doing that you can make them bulletproof yeah. right? so, so we tried that oh, did uh, it work? and it got banned from TikTok <laughs> <laughs> yeah why? That's funny. Uh, well, that so, would be so, sick, though. So, Bulletproof house. So, yeah. so we laminated in Kevlar, and we did this whole funny video mm-hmm. about shooting it, uh, yeah. and then it got pulled from from TikTok ah. for violating the the rules. You're not allowed to yeah. shoot on there. Uh, yeah, I feel like I've been shadow banned ever since then. So it's sad. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't so, be surprised. So how do you handle the success and the success that you have and the success that's coming? Like, how how do you handle this much success? Because you you're gonna be possibly a billionaire at, at, at some point right maybe multi-billionaire yeah i mean right and is now this something, and is this something do you plan on selling do you plan on holding it forever like what's your ultimate goal with this 
I think that I'll have uh, a lot of value to provide to the company for quite a while. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, I'll be mostly spent once the company's matured. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm going to be with the company until till we IPO, till till after that, till mm -hmm. we continue to mm -hmm. to build it up and and develop it. And you know, in general, it's it's been a, a wild ride because we've gone from being unknown, uh, being very small, to all of a sudden. Uh, having everyone know about us yeah. like not only you know nice people who like us but you also people crazy people <laughs> and so i've experienced this like whirlwind of, of mm -hmm. craziness and it's all the result of of how we raised the money and how we got the interest mm -hmm. i leveraged social media in a way that kind of set records and of course that brought us you know 140 million plus dollars in investment mm -hmm. money the, this huge wait list all mm -hmm. these other resources and opportunities but there was a dark side to that but as well. <laughs> explain how you raised 40 million leveraging social media. 140. So 100, 100, I'm sorry, 140 <laughs> million leveraging social media to those that think social media, they hate social media or it's for whatever. Like, how, how did you do that? And well, was that yeah. a plan? Did you plan that or it just kind of just manifested itself and you're like, all right, fuck it, I'm, I'm going to go with this. Mm. You know, at the beginning, I was just trying anything and whatever works. <laughs> what do you mean trying? Just trying anything to get the word out to further the company and, and things started working and I kept double down, doubling down on that. So, you know, social media was the way, the best way to get the word out. It works better than going to, to the traditional press or the local news. So I just kept running with that. And, you know, raising money via crowdfunding is something I would suggest to, to most entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. It's just an amazing way for you to control your own destiny, for you to, uh, you know, really uh, make sure you're commanding, you know, the, the project. And mm -hmm. then you can basically generate in, in excitement in that and then give people a way to invest in the company through various securities exemptions. Mm -hmm. um, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Regulation D, Regulation CF, Regulation A. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, it's, there's so many positives to, to doing it that way mm -hmm. and um, highly recommend. And you mentioned there's a dark side. I feel like not a lot of people dive into this topic, but what's some <laughs> things you could share about that? So like, Going from, you know, just being a, a private person to having to kind of like pimp myself out on, on social media mm -hmm. uh, for the for the benefit of the company, <laughs> right. uh, and then realizing like, at this point, I kind of have sympathy towards some celebrities mm -hmm. because I'm 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 you know dealing with like one percent. But if you're a celebrity, I can't imagine like how much crazy people you have, right. how many hate comments you have. Right. Like, like you need like a psychi psychiatrist after that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's insane. Um, so, you know, we, we have a, a huge volume of people looking at what we're doing, mm -hmm. focusing on what we're doing. Um, and, you know, along with the positive comes a few, you know, crazy people as well. Mm. <laughs> What's the craziest person you've dealt with? So, uh, funny story, sad story. Um, Actually, I'll mention, uh, and I won't say the name, but there was a guy actually inside our company uh, mm -hmm. from early on mm -hmm. who turned out to be a very kind of uh, evil, psychotic uh, character. Mm -hmm. And what he did was... He worked for you guys? He yeah, he, he worked director. for me. Uh, back when we were just a, a small okay. new company, uh, just a few employees, mm -hmm. I, I hired this guy. Right. Uh, and, you know, he's a very slick, uh, convincing guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually we figured out that he was actually stealing from investors. So this guy stole about, I think, about a million dollars uh, from 10 investors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, really, like, just a horrible betrayal uh, wow. from someone who, you know, I was very, very nice to. Wow. And um, what he did was he basically... Bef worked in our investor relations department, befriended some investors, and then went ahead and, and told them, hey, I have, I have shares in the company that I would like to sell you, personal shares. He said, wire me money, I'll give you 10 shares for the price of one, and he convinced a few people to wire him about a million dollars, and then he uh, fled the country. No way. Yeah, real f***ing ass. That's crazy. <laughs> real f***ing ass. Did you get yeah. the money back? No. Uh, it's all still kind of uh, pending right now. It all just just happened wow. pretty recently. Mm -hmm. You know, we discovered we he left mm -hmm. abruptly um, the company, and then we discovered what he had done. Mm -hmm. uh, started investigating it. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, uh, he kind of confessed everything. Uh, not sure why. So so we figured out uh, <laughs> everything sure he why. did. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, really really mm -hmm. horrible. Um, the guy had a family too. Jeez. That he basically you know 
he left them. abandoned yeah over, over a little bit of money that's great uh really really sad a so. million can't last you your whole life yeah and and doing something like that what's the end game like you're gonna get caught yeah. like it's not like he stole like like a life change. cash yeah. it's not like he stole like cash mm -hmm. out of someone's like drawer yeah, he's, like this he's, was he's like is that a too. paper trail yeah, yeah, paper yeah. I'm conversation like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. what, what, what was yeah. the end game hey, is it is it done yet yeah you cool. wire yet <laughs> yeah. there's a wire record right, right. <laughs> all kind of records <laughs> so like um back to the boxables is it possible that you can implement ai to where it's like a smart home Are mm. you, have you thought that far like Maybe oh, yeah. it's possible to where you can command the whole house to kind of do whatever it is that you want since you're kind of, you know, you're you're basically like in doing a little bit of innovation here. So, like, have you thought that far, like making it a whole smart home? Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities for mm -hmm. uh, smart home stuff, AI mm -hmm. stuff, not just in the house people live in, mm -hmm. but, for example, like in our manufacturing facility. Yeah, so I'm saying, yeah. huge amount of 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 work and effort put into the logistics the mm -hmm. way the parts are moved around the factory uh the sourcing supply mm -hmm. i mean ai of course is going to have you know as we all know a, a huge impact on everything as it mm -hmm. continues to roll out so we'll be excited to implement that at our factory as soon as we can wrap our heads around how to do that yeah but <laughs> I basically put smart would be sick dude i have a smart oven mm -hmm. you put any food in mm -hmm. it and it recognizes the food and it tells you like how long you want to cook you want to cook extra wow. burnt like light roasted yeah, wait see. so you're saying it, it sees the food with the camera and knows how to cook it yeah so it's called a june <laughs> it's a june oven so i put eggs in there and it yeah. hard boils it for me every morning wow i'll put broccoli in there it knows it's broccoli see? salmon wow. so imagine the smart home is just like it knows what time you're getting home make sure the house is heated a certain way just like just little stuff like that or even telling them what to do and how to do things yeah. yeah, it'd be cool to have your, you could control your AC from like your phone. Yeah, I mean. So when you come home, the house is nice. Yeah, I mean, it just, it's make it a whole smart home. It's, be it's, it's in the works at Boxable. So we okay. have this um, mascot called mm -hmm. Frank. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the, he's a pig. Yeah. Um, so, so we're going to, so we're, yeah, he's a pig. Oh, he's a pig. Uh, so we're going to do, hey, Frank, mm -hmm. you know, hey, Frank, lock the doors. Hey, Frank, yeah. close the blinds. Oh, and, I got uh, you. We're, we're going to be able to kind of own that whole ecosystem. Okay. You know, where we build it all out custom for our, our buildings mm -hmm. and uh it all works together cohesively mm -hmm. um so how did the elon musk connection happen was it a dm was it a phone call was it a, a, ma a email mysteriously from one of his people <laughs> like how, how, how did that whole synergy happen well it was twitter of course oh it was twitter <laughs> so he, before yeah. he bought it or after before he bought it yeah oh. so uh i guess what happened is, was is, is he an investor no he's not no. okay so uh, elon musk is not an investor those rumors aren't true no but but he did uh, buy a, a boxable casita. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually one of the first three prototypes that mm -hmm. that we built, uh, and he's got it in his backyard at SpaceX in Boca Chica, Texas, I believe, mm -hmm. right now. Um, but yeah, so so uh, one he of the accounts promoting it heavy. He was like sleeping in it. He, he, he kind of was promoting it. I mean, so, yeah. so what happened was he saw uh, a post mm -hmm. with the video of the house unfolding mm -hmm. uh, and he liked the post and then the next day his assistant called me and was like hey can we buy one of these wow uh, actually they wanted to buy more than one and I was like well I only have three and I need to keep at least two I'll sell you one uh, <laughs> and mm -hmm. they were like sure we'll take it and nice. we went ahead and, and deployed it in uh, Texas and at first uh, we weren't allowed to say anything about it because we had NDAs and all that mm -hmm. so we didn't and at some point months and months later he tweeted about living in a fifty thousand dollar house um and and uh then the press jumped yeah on he it. was promoted himself yeah that's a, I, I heard well he didn't it. say the brand he just said fifty thousand no. foldable house i think he <laughs> said box so so it, it's it's a little tricky because what happened was he wasn't originally he wasn't talking about the boxable mm -hmm. um but the press put two and two together and put out articles saying mm -hmm. that he was talking about the boxable more was, leverage and and then uh we couldn't say anything so people were asking me the whole mm -hmm. time and i'm like no comment no comment <laughs> and uh and then they're like accusing me of lying i'm like i said no comment mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah. and then eventually he came out and explained in another podcast mm -hmm. like yes i did buy one i, I do own it mm -hmm. uh, i wasn't talking about it in that original tweet but yeah, yeah it's it's a cool product he said that's so, awesome uh, yeah, that that was great. And you know, before that happened, we had already been doing so well with social media. Like mm -hmm. uh, we did what's called a, a, a Reg CF, uh, mm -hmm. where we raised four million dollars in thirteen days, mm -hmm. and I think that was like a, a record uh, back then for that type Via of fundraising. Social media. And and then after 
then after that, Musk came in and we got all these press articles. Right. And then things went to a whole nother level of, right. of awareness of the company. Right. Uh, and it's just been a wild ride for sure. A lot of a lot of businesses struggle marketing on social media. Do you think your success has been the product is just so unique and different? Or yeah. do you think you had some unique marketing tactics? Yeah, you know, um, I can't take all the credit. Um, I definitely do a, a lot of different stuff. You know, I try a lot of things, but at the end of the day, uh, this is all off the back of a really cool product. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the sales and marketing that we have right now, frankly, it's not even executed that well, mm. uh, but we've done so well on it. Uh, so there's still like a lot of meat on the bone for yeah, us to improve so all new, that. Like five years, right? If, if that. Like. Yeah, it's, it's five years from, from just an idea, uh, but we've actually only been producing houses about 18 months now. Wow. Bro, at a $3 billion valuation. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. That's yeah. even more crazier. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the, the, the valuation and the size of the manufacturing facility and mm -hmm. all that, this is still just the very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. And it's still almost proof of concept mm -hmm. because yeah. what we're doing right now is just proving that we have the uh, potential to scale manufacturing, mm -hmm. that we've solved the problems that will make it possible mm -hmm. to scale manufacturing so really you know what we have is a, a pretty big manufacturing facility a pretty big operation but it's not where we need to be mm -hmm. and where we need to be is what you see with the automobile makers so mm -hmm. whether it's like a Ford factory or a, a Tesla factory they're putting out uh, pretty much like one car a minute output out yeah, of these factories 40,000 cars yeah in them, exactly so there, yeah. so we need to get to that with housing mm -hmm. and there's no reason uh, we shouldn't be able to do that based on all the innovations that Boxable has so mm -hmm. what I'm doing now is basically saying Look what we've done. We've proven out all the basics. Mm -hmm. Now come and give me the resources to scale up to that uh, one house per minute number, mm -hmm. uh, which of course is is you know really needed by the market. You know housing demand and everything. But when you start to mass produce, you and I both know that you run into a significant amount of problems. Like you mentioned, Ford they have the worst cars, right. <laughs> some of the worst cars. Quality so, control, right? Yeah. So how do you manage the QC? pumping out uh not a home a minute but i would you would you say a part a minute because you, you there's no way you can manufacture a home in a minute but how would you manage the qc on you know each individual thing you just so you know right now we, we can already build a house the output could be if everything goes perfect in a day mm -hmm. maybe one house every two hours or so mm -hmm. uh, and that's just at this this early one stage whole, whole house uh, yeah, just a house every two hours comes out the door. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's just early stage, very manual stuff. Right. Uh, first gen, uh, first gen product, no, no custom automation. Right. Uh, so we're already doing really good. Mm -hmm. And then when I look at the next level of scale, the next level of, of mass production, right. I want to look out into a, our factory and just see a sea of, of robot arms going, going crazy. Uh, and, and you're right. There is going to be a huge amount of, of problems and challenges. Absolutely, uh, and we have a huge amount of problems and challenges at the company right yeah, now. Yeah. Um, actually, it's it's extraordinary to me mm -hmm. just how many problems and issues there mm -hmm. are. Right. But that's the way it's got to be because if it wasn't that hard to do, somebody would have would have done it already. Right. 100%. Um, so we just we grind through, and uh, you know every problem we solve is a barrier to entry for others, mm -hmm. and a, a, you know a, a benefit for for the company, and puts us further and further ahead as we get every little thing squared away, mm -hmm. whether it's manufacturing quality control, uh, marketing sales, right. regulatory, just so many different variables that all need to be dialed in. And we keep grinding away and we just get into a stronger and stronger position right. as a company. And I know you mentioned too that you want to do a, a charity too that actually um, is for the homeless. You want to you know, kind of start going that route where you're giving, um, uh, you're creating a place where homeless people can can go can you speak about that yeah you know in general the idea behind the company is to do you know good works right. and make the world a better place right. you know on a, on a very big scale and the idea is that we want to dramatically push down the cost of, of housing mm -hmm. uh, and and achieve that uh, benefit for humanity through capitalism and successful business mm -hmm. uh, but you know we are planning also to seed a, a small uh, charity soon and kind of uh, get that in the works so that we mm -hmm. can hopefully provide a little extra boost uh, where it makes sense for you know needy families and yeah. help the housing to be more affordable that's a real problem especially in San Francisco California yeah. even yeah. here Homeless. The homelessness yeah. is like a real problem. So you even thinking yeah. about that is like 
yeah. are. Yeah, I mean, the homeless thing is a pretty, you know, controversial issue uh, with a lot of different areas. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a few different sections. Like, there's people who are maybe just, like, down on their luck, mm -hmm. and they won't necessarily be homeless that long. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have, like, mental health, uh, and then mm -hmm. you have drugs as well. Right, right. Um, and, and the drug people and the mental health people, it's almost a, a problem separate and above and beyond mm -hmm. housing. Um, however, I think that if we can o lower the overall cost of housing forever, mm -hmm. create an abundance of it and availability of it, uh, you would be able to actually put those people somewhere right. and deal with them versus having them out on the streets, uh, creating an, an even worse nightmarish scenario that you have mm. now. How do you deal with competitors? Because I saw a few online. You know, um, it's interesting uh, when I think about competitors because, uh, first of all, you know, 90% of building construction is done on site, uh, mm -hmm. not in a factory. So I think of that whole section of, of companies and people as potential customers. Like if we show them a better way to build that's faster and, and lower cost for them, they're gonna jump all over that and then, mm. and then boom, they're our customers. Uh, but beyond that, the demand for housing and the housing price is, is so high mm -hmm. that really there's enough room for everyone right now. Mm. Uh, if, if you can provide housing, you know, it's, it's gone, it's, it's gonna sell. Uh, even at, a, at an astronomical price at this point. So I don't really see a huge uh, competition going on. Uh, and I certainly don't see anyone who's figured out as much as, as we have. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest competitors that are established real businesses are the manufactured housing guys. So Champion, uh, uh, Clayton Homes, Clayton uh, Cavco Homes. Mm -hmm. uh, these are uh, trailer homes, oh, double wide, right single here. wide. Um, those are the only guys that mm -hmm. are doing factory built housing in a way that works. Got and it. they kind of have a kind of a limited uh, market as well because of the type of product that they have. Mm. <coughs> wow. Will you guys be adding garages soon? Are you already working on that? Or is that something that's going to be in the works too? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to have a whole lineup of products. So right now we have the 20 by 20 room module. Mm. It comes with the uh, kitchen bathroom done. Uh, after that, we'll roll out uh, maybe another 20 by 20 that just has maybe one bedroom in it mm. or it has only a bathroom in it or maybe it has two bedrooms in it. Mm. At that point, you can start sticking those different boxes together. Mm. Then uh, later on down the line, we'll roll out bigger boxes. So uh, currently 20 by 20, we'll do 20 by 30, 20 by 40. And then you start getting a really big room that you can connect to other rooms and, and you know, stack and arrange. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, garages, too, and try to roll out, you know, this full product lineup to simplify the build process for the developers and builders. And how, how much is the shipping cost and the total? Like, customers, like, what are they paying total for this complete to... Yeah, so one of the big innovations with Boxable, mm -hmm. probably the most important innovation is that we've actually fixed shipping. So traditionally, you know, buildings are very big. So mm -hmm. if you try to ship a building, it mm -hmm. becomes very expensive right. because it's too big for the road. Right. And that's the case for manufactured housing uh, guys, other, mm -hmm. other modular mm -hmm. house companies. So at Boxable, we figured out how to make this a highway legal load to ship it at the lowest possible cost. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it opens up the shipping radius from the factory. So whereas a traditional factory built housing guy, they're only gonna ship a few hundred miles from their factory because if they go beyond that, it just costs way too much. Right. But we can ship anywhere around the whole country wow. cost effectively. That's the single most important thing that allows us to actually scale up manufacturing, have a real mass production, mm -hmm. uh, get take advantage of the economies of scale, take advantage of the automation, and then hopefully push it down to the lowest possible cost. So not only are we shipping a uh, highway legal load mm -hmm. that's not over wide, that doesn't cost more, mm -hmm. but we're shipping uh, 20 feet on an eight and a half footprint. So 20 feet of room mm -hmm. is, is on an eight and a half footprint. So a traditional factory built house, you would actually have two 10 foot loads to mm -hmm. equal one of our units. Right. And both of those 10 foot loads would be over wide. They would require special permits, special routes, uh, police escorts, like a whole nightmare of nonsense and mm -hmm. regulation and added cost. So for us, you know, we have this crazy efficient way of shipping and mm -hmm. that opens up everything else we want to do. And uh, we can not only put a uh, 20 foot wide casita on a single truck, but we can actually put two casitas on, on one truck. So mm -hmm. I don't know wow. if you've ever seen like, you know, yeah. is two, that two folded casitas or one. are they already, are, are already open? Um, so 
uh, the house folds up from 20 feet down to eight and a half feet oh, okay. and kind of all the empty space gets compressed mm -hmm. uh, but there's still a, a portion of the room that doesn't actually fold and that's where we put kitchen bathroom in this model that's mm -hmm. where we could put other things in other models mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah. Galliano, I can't wait to see where this goes, man. Yeah, we'll be rooting yeah, for yeah. you. Um, it's going. Any closing comments? I think you know you guys should come check out the factory. Oh, yeah, for sure. uh, we also invite anyone else to to come take a peek. Uh, mm -hmm. We do tours every day. Uh, there's models in the parking lot that are actually open 24/7, mm -hmm. uh, and I'd suggest anyone who's interested checks out our, our social media. We're basically posting nonstop uh, live what we're doing mm -hmm. on YouTube, on on Instagram, so mm -hmm. you can stay up to date with the with the latest info on there. Uh, and one other thing, we're looking to hire you know the most talented people from all around the country. So mm -hmm. please check out our uh, jobs section on our website as well. Nice. There we go, Wayne. Get a box of <laughs> Please. They're cool. Check them out, guys. I might have to get one, honestly. Yeah, I think um, I think this interview ended, too. This, this is... I'm not done talking. Yeah, we'll have to do a part two. Yeah. Podcast studio, Boxable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's right? make that happen. Fire. We could build all the studio inside one of them. Literally. Oh, yeah. Just drop it in. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Digital Social Hour. See you next time. Peace.